Hey, it's Ryan Gordon. I want to talk to you today about the SDL3 audio subsystem. Um, but before we do that, I want to show you how we used to do this in SDL2. And this is the only code I'm going to show you in this video, so don't panic. Um, if you've ever written audio code with SDL2, then you are familiar with the audio callback. When you open a device, you give it a function, and SDL will relentlessly call this uh, every couple milliseconds and say, give me more data. And you would have to fill this buffer with this many bytes of data with our really generic generate exactly enough sound function here. Um, now, this has worked for many, many years, but this has caused a couple of problems, too. For one thing, uh, this runs relentlessly, and if you are not ready for uh, it when it comes and you can't generate enough sound, you're going to either get skips in your audio or audio, audio artifacts or dropouts or some sort of terrible thing. Uh, and furthermore, this runs in a separate thread, so you're always going to have to coordinate with your engine to make sure you're in a position where you're not causing a race condition to generate this sound. And, of course, this number varies from call to call, depending on how much the hardware needs at the time, so you have to be prepared to deal with that. Um, and to be fair, for more than 20 years, this is how SDL has made audio, so lots of games have used this and used it successfully, but we think there is a better way out there. So we've started working on a new thing for SDL3, and without code, I'm going to show you visually how this works. Now. I have a lot of hardware hooked up to this machine right now. I've got my laptop hardware itself, and then I've got the headphones I'm wearing and the microphone I'm speaking into for this video. And SDL also always presents a single system default device, which we'll talk about in a moment. But the way this works in SDL2 is you have the callback, and you always have to provide data. But in SDL3, we're expanding a concept that's in SDL2 called audio streams. Now, audio streams were these objects that you could feed data to, and it would buffer and convert that data as necessary to get into another format for literally for streaming audio. Um, now we have extended this idea to say instead of having an audio callback that you fill in a buffer of, you just bind an audio stream to an audio device and as it needs data it will pull it from the stream and as you have more data to give it you fill it into the other end of the stream and it keeps going. Now there's something, let's get some audio up here first just so I'm thinking about, let's get some music on here, maybe a sound effect or two. Let's get some text-to-speech stuff here, too. Okay. In SDL3, you do not actually open the physical hardware anymore. Um, we expose it to you. You can pick which hardware you want to play on. But instead of playing on the hardware directly, when you open it, you get what's called a logical device, a virtual device, if you will, just a fake device. So you do not talk directly to the hardware. You talk to this thing. And the reason we do that is that sometimes you have to link to another library in your game where your game wants to make sound, but the library is there to do, I don't know, text-to-speech or voice over IP or something, maybe play background music, and it also wants to open a device. Now it can do it. It just gets its own virtual device. So there's your voice over IP, maybe your text-to-speech. Maybe you have a music library that does decoding. And as far as these are all concerned, they're separate devices. They do not interfere with each other. They do not conflict uh, but each of them can play their own thing without interfering with the others. So let's put some music on our main game here. Oh, that's really loud. My headphones are going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. Uh, and then maybe you have text-to-speech going over here. And maybe you have some sound effects. So you have all these things going. Each of these are playing at the same time. They pull from their audio streams they need it, and SDL mixes all these together before sending on to the physical hardware. Now, since you're binding audio streams to hardware, you can have more than one stream bound at a time. So, that means you can have multiple streams on the same thing, all playing at once, and SCL will mix those. So now you have all your streams on one device and all the streams on all the other devices. They all mix, and at one time, they all go to the hardware as necessary. And this does not happen in a callback unless you want it to. It's just you feed it data as you have it, and it mixes it as it needs it. Um, this is a big, big improvement in terms of programmer usability. I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out so far. Now, I said before that you can see your different pieces of hardware, and maybe you want to, you know, play your audio from your game in one and then have, like, a USB headset that you use for, like, team chat or something like that. Uh, so you can pick specific pieces of hardware if you want, but it might also just make sense for you to open the system default device, because SDL3 does something SDL2 would not. When you change the system default device, perhaps you've plugged in something new, or you've gone to the control panel for your system and said, I want all my default audio goes somewhere else, SDL will notice that and migrate from between pieces of hardware for you. So for example, let's play that music again. This is on the system default device, which is the headphones I'm playing on, which is why you hear it 
mixed into this video. Um, but I'm going to switch there, so it's my system default device is just the laptop external speaker, so the microphone will pick this up. And you can hear that there. Now I'm going to switch back real quick. I'm back on my headphones again. Um, as far as your program is concerned, it did not know anything changed. It was still playing to the same device and nothing's there. But behind the scenes, SDL noticed the system default changed and moved from this piece of hardware to this one over here. Um, and then when I switched it back, it just opened the other device, migrated everything over, closed the other. No wiser as far as the application is concerned, but the user gets a better experience out of that. Now capture devices, they work the same way as output ones. You can have multiple things. Each one will get us, uh, every audio stream bound to this will get a set uh, identical copy of the captured audio that everyone else will. But let's pull one out of here and do a little recording real quick. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. Now let's drop this on here so we can play it. Quick. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. Now let's drop this. There you go. So uh, audio streams can work in both directions, no problem. Uh, and that's basically the concept for SDL3's audio. I think it's going to be much easier to use, uh, but if you really, really like the callback, it's still there, except each audio stream has a callback. So you would open a device and bind a stream to it, which you can do in one function in SDL3. Don't get nervous. And you can provide a callback to that audio stream and then use it more or less the same way you did in SDL2, except you can have as many audio streams bound as you want with their own callbacks, which gives you an enormous amount of power to control the data going in and then let SDL mix it on the back end for you. So it's kind of fun. I'm pretty happy with how this is all turning out. Um, I, I think it's going to be easier for you to use. It's going to let you do more powerful things, and uh, it's going to be just more enjoyable to work with. And I think uh, you're really going to like it when you get to try it. So can't wait for you to see it. It's going in revision control very shortly. And uh, that's all I have to show you. So I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.